So we're given this probability distribution function, f of x given lambda equals lambda e to the negative lambda x. And then this represents the exponential distribution and it's known as m with parameter lambda. So this is exponential distribution. Okay, and what we need to find from that is the maximum likelihood of this lambda, i.e. lambda hat. That was what we will call our MLE. So how are we going to go about finding that? Well, first of all, we see that the parameters of x and lambda are going to be x is greater than zero and lambda is also greater than zero. So that's the rules for the exponential distribution. So how are we going to go find the MLE? Well, first of all, we find the log likelihood. So the log likelihood of lambda, that equals the sum of all these functions here. So that equals the sum of i equals 1 to n of all the log of the f of x i given a lambda. Okay, so now what we do is we're going to, for this function here, the f of x given lambda, we can now substitute this one in. So then that equals n goes from 1, I oh, say i equals 1 to n log of this function here. So I'll just put that in brackets, lambda e to negative lambda x. I'm going to put that as i as well. It's all the okay, so now we're going to take the log of this and also considering the summation uh, part of the equation here. So now what we get is we get log of lambda. So that just takes the log of that. And then we're not to forget this part here. So instead of putting the summation here, we can put n. So n log lambda, that takes care of that. Now we need to deal with this exponential of negative lambda and the xi's and the log of that. Well, log and exponential are inverse functions. So now we can end up with negative lambda and then the xi's, they're still in a summation. I'm going to leave them like that because there's a little substitution we can do in a minute. So i equals 1 to n of all the xi's. So dealing with this xi, what we do know is we've got the sum of i equals 1 to n of the xi's. If we just divide this by n, we've got the average. So that equals x bar. But we've just changed the value of this a little bit. So what we can do is we can just maybe multiply that by n and put the x bar in and then we haven't changed the value at all. So what we say is we get n log lambda minus lambda times n times the x bar. Then that and that are still the same value. Okay, that's great. So we've got the log likelihood function. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of that and try and isolate the lambda. So let's do that here. So first derivative with respect to lambda. So log lambda becomes 1 over lambda. And then multiplied by n, we just get n over lambda. And the derivative of this with respect to lambda is just n x bar. That's minus n. Okay, so now well on the way to find the maximum likelihood estimator. So to do that, we set this to be zero and then isolate the lambda, hopefully. So we got n over lambda minus n x bar equals zero. So now what we can say is that n over lambda equals n x bar. We can flip this round a little bit to get the lambda on the top. So lambda over n equals 1 over n x bar. And then multiply both sides by the n. So we can get these cancelled out. Then we get lambda equals 1 over x bar. Okay, so to check if this is a good candidate or not, we just need to take the second derivative of this. 
So the log likelihood, oh, so the log likelihood with respect to lambda, first derivative, was n over lambda minus n x bar. So now we find the second derivative with respect to lambda. So m over lambda, second derivative of that, that becomes lambda, lambda squared. And then as this is going to be uh, lambda to the power of minus 1, we now need to multiply the top by minus 1. So we end up with minus n over lambda squared. And uh, this with respect to lambda, this is just a constant multiple, no lambda involved, so that's just zero. So that now just disappears. So now we end up with this second derivative of n over lambda squared. Well, lambda is greater than zero, so this bar here is positive. n, well, n is always from one to however number of variables you've got. So this will be negative. So negative over a positive, this is always going to be uh, less than zero. So this uh, second derivative with respect to lambda, change that, is going to be less than zero. Therefore, this is going to be a suitable maximum likelihood estimator. So what we say is that maximum likelihood for lambda equals one over x bar. And as we know, with the exponential distribution, the mean of that is 1 over lambda. Then that pretty much makes sense of all the calculations that we've just done. Okay.